Hello, uh, this is take three on this video, and um, it's it's been a, a little bit challenging this morning. For some reason, uh, these stamps that, that I purchased from Crafters Companion, um, I don't know if it's the stamp itself or it's um, my platform. I'm not getting a good image. Now, I stamped it before. I made, I made one of the cards, and still on this side of the image, you see that it's not really crisp it doesn't look like this part and this this part stamped better and I'm, I'm having the same issues here i stamped this thing a bunch of times and it's still not giving me <clears throat> excuse me a good um stamping so i put cardstock underneath to see if it's the platform and to see if i had to um add a build up a little bit before stamping this thing and we're going to try it now um hopefully this one works and i don't have to scrap the video but um we'll see so i have 110 um, pound cardstock here and on the bottom i put another piece just to add some book to the bottom of it to see if it stamps better and let's see that's a little better but this corner which is the one that keeps giving an issue um is still doing it i mean if you guys have any tips on how that can be rectified i would appreciate it because this is getting quite much frustrating so in order to try to get um the whole thing to stamp i'm pressing it but then you mess up the rest of it Ugh. okay let me just complete it and we'll move from here you know what that's the way it's staying We'll figure that out. I may have to sand that one down. Um, next, we're going to do the fol foliage. You know, I didn't even say what we were working on. We're um, working on the Crafters Companion Towards the Night Before Christmas set. Um, I've been trying, like I said, I try to make this video three times now, and the stamp hasn't been cooperating. Neither one of them have. So hopefully this fixes that problem. Um... I did I made this card before and had the same issues and had to like kind of smush it. This is the card that I completed. And as you can see, this side is having the same issue. Um, but anyway, I, I was able to come camouflage it. It came out really nice. Um, I added Spectrum Noir's um glitter. Uh let's see where is it? Here it goes. Um the sparkle. And this is water based, and the um, markers were the Spectrum Noir Tri Blend. So it was stamped with alcohol proof ink. The reason I'm telling you is because if you're going to use anything that's water based on something that you colored in with alcohol markers, you need to be careful um, when you get close to the actual um, stamping ink because this is going to move a water. Um, the only reason that alcohol doesn't move it is because it's a water base. So if you put water on it, you're going to make that black black ink um, sneer. So be very careful when you're using stuff like this. But if you use it carefully, you can get a beautiful result, as you can see. Anyway, we're going to continue on with the card. Hopefully we can get this thing stamped through. And... Um, Let's see what happens. See, this stamp is not touching here. Even when you stamp, you can see that it's not it's not reaching and all you're doing is smearing it I'm not sure what to do here um, 
Let's just try something. Let me see if it's the actual stamp. I'm going to move this down a little bit. And then we're going to try to do something here. Let's see. Let's see if it's going to stamp all the way. I'm just going to put that there for a second. I put a little piece of paper there just to see if it's the stamp. It's the stamp. Okay, so we're probably going to have to sand that down to try to make it a little more even and hopefully not ruin the stamp. I don't mind the acrylic um, stamps. What I do mind is when they skimp on the quality of it. You know, that's as good as it's going to get. That's something. Okay, let's stamp the last piece. Okay, that won't work well. Okay, we're going to work with that. And we're going to use this piece um, for the bottom because when you're using alcohol inks, you should put a piece of cardstock so um, the ink saturates a lot and um, it'll bleed through. Let me show you like there or there, as you can see. So your best bet is to um, put a piece of cardstock so when it goes through, it goes into another piece of cardstock as opposed to um just spreading out and spreading out it could ruin your image and um, we're not going to color this the traditional colors i'm going to go with more of a vintage g pinks and um blues and purples so um hmm. let's start off with the vintage pink and again these are the tri-blend markers it comes with all three, um, light, medium, and dark. So it takes kind of the guesswork out of, out of creating, um, your blends. It's with the, the traditional markers where you have to choose a couple of colors and, and then from there, blend them together. They took the hard work out and did that for you. So we're just going to color these up. I'm not being very careful with this first layer just because it's going to be covered over and over again. Now I left the, the, the center white on purpose. So when you come back with your light tones after you've blended all these colors in, you have that nice highlight in the center so um, now we're gonna go with the dark tone and we're just gonna go to all the areas we think it would be now um, here i just color down a little bit and then i come back and since this is more like a, a cylinder type of object you try to go from the ends to the center and that'll give you the best blend so when you look at it it looks like it's curved so let's just color that up Now you would take your time not to go outside the lines I accidentally did. That's okay, I'll fix that later. Okay. 
Now we're going to come with the mid-tone and blend that out. You want to make sure you try to get that seam between the mid-tone and the dark tone smoothed out. So it's, it's more pleasing to the eye. You don't have harsh lines. And we're just going to color that up. And then we're going to come back in with the light tone. Now, we're going to still blend this out more, so don't be startled. <laughs> Again, you try to get those um, where those two colors meet. You really try to blend that out. I'm hoping you can see that. And you just keep it swirling. Yay. Now, still looks horrible. We're going to go back with our dark tone. And now you're going to see how it starts blending a lot better. Because you have a lot of color laid down already. So we're going to just add, add, add. back to our mid-tone and you see how everything starts <clears throat> blending much better now you don't really have to work so hard at it this is the stuff that takes the longest just try to make those blends that, that are pleasing to your eye Now, we're going to let this dry <clears throat> just because um, you won't get the full effect until you see it dry. But so far, I like the way that looks. And now, we're going to decide what to do with this part. Um, are we going to do a different color? Are we going to add, like, um, we can add just a little bit of highlight and then use um, like a sparkle. That'll be nice. Hmm. I don't know. Let's, <clears throat> hmm. this is where <laughs> things get a little bit time consuming. <clears throat> Let's do some blue. We're going to do blue and pink. This is the light tone. And we're just going to add a little bit. And with this one, we're just going to do two tones to the mid tone and the light tone. Just to add a little bit of color. Let me go back with our light. Now, as you can see, I had a, <clears throat> a little bit of an oopsie there. That's okay. 
we can go back in <clears throat> And just use a color to blend that out so we don't actually actually lose our project we can just continue give me one second sorry about that I had to cough <laughs> and then we're gonna go in with the mid-tone same way we did with the, with the blue And that was um, the Vintage Blue Blend. Mm. We're going to go with the blue, light blue here. And just add some color on. And I think we're done with that part. Now here, I guess we'll go ahead with the blue. And we're using the same technique, just leaving that white part exposed. So then you get a nice highlight in the center. Blend that out. And then we come back with our light color. And there we go. This time I just colored the whole thing in. Fun fact, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> but you know, it's done, so you just got to figure it out, right? That's because I was thinking what color paper to put this on. That's okay. I think we achieved the same kind of look. So that's what we have. Now our hmm, these guys. I think we're gonna color them like a light pink, and then we'll use some light greens to. Since we're using these um, muted colors, you don't want to use anything too bright. So, let's use the light pinks. And we're just gonna get color those guys up. And we can always also come back and use the light color of this pink to give those mid-tones and then come back with this light one. You can mix and match your colors and if you don't have a blend you like then create your own. And then we'll come back oops, with the light color and just 
Go to those in. Okay. And then here, I think we'll go just a little bit darker. So maybe go with these colors. Let's go back with our mid-tone. These things move fast because they're so and they're small. So with just a little bit of ink, you get that going. Let's do a little bit of green here. It's hard to see what's supposed to be colored. Okay. Uh, this little guy down here. And that's it for them. And let's do this last flower. Okay, and now we're going to color that little present. We're going to do that light blue. And I think we're good to go. Okay. So we have all three pieces done so now we're gonna just cut them out and then we'll figure out what to put them on here's our dive Yes, using some tape to secure it. It's the Scotch um, repositionable tape. Works great for me. And it's uh, cost effective, so yeah, <laughs> that's a plus. Win win. And now I gotta figure out which one goes. Yep, and that's it. That's the guy. Okay, so we're going to run this through the machine and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have my pieces cut out. But before I um, put them together, I want to add some of this stuff. I've never used this stuff before. It's called diamond dust. Now, this is some glitter that's like... It's, I mean, it looks like glass. So I'm, I want to try to put some of that on maybe the flowers and maybe the bottom of of these stockings let's see how it goes i mean we may love it and we may hate it never know until you try so i'm gonna take my glue and especially on this large flower i'm just gonna put some glue there and i'm just gonna put the glue where i want the glitter to stick so it's not gonna be on everything And then we'll see what happens. And now we'll put some of this stuff on here. And 
we'll tap the excess off and then we get that let's see how that dries I'm going to do the uh, also to the end of these guys to see how that works again we may love it we may hate it <laughs> I like to experiment Okay, now we're going to add some more of this stuff. And then we'll put it to the side and let it dry and then we'll see if we love it or we hate it. <laughs> okay, I'll be back when it dries. So I figure while we wait for that to dry, um, we can go ahead and decide what paper to use. Let me just clean this up a little bit. Okay, let's get all that glitter out of there. Okay, so we have two different papers here. We can either place this on the green. Or on the white, I mean on the the cardstock. Oh, that's complicated. <laughs> they both look pretty. I think I'm gonna cut out um, both of them, and then we'll see which one we use. If we don't use it on this project, we can use it on another. So. It doesn't go to waste. I'm not gonna um, have you guys listening to the noise of this machine. I'm using the Gemini uh, Junior to cut out uh, the dies and stuff. So um, I'll be right back. I'm just gonna cut that out. Okay, so um, I cut both of them out. So let's see which looks best. Let's put that there and then add that. So that's on green. And then Oh, still complicated. <laughs> they both look pretty. I think we're going to use the craft paper. I think I like that better. That way we can use a darker tone on, on the actual card. All right, so I'm going to glue this together and then I'll be back with the other paper. Okay, so I have my foam ready. So we're going to add some foam to these guys. And let's add one more. Actually, now we're going to add two more. Okay. So let's take these guys out.
And then we're going to add this to the card. I think right there is good. We're going to add some to this part. And I think I'm actually going to trim this down a little bit. Let's see how much is going to show. Just, well, you know what? I don't need to. Let's add that. And then this guy is going to go right on top. Just like that. So let's glue this little guy in. And we're using art glitter glue. Uh, that's our wet glue today. Okay. And then we're going to put that guy there. Okay, and that's what we have so far. I'm loving this um, diamond dust. It adds a lot to the card. It's it's too big to add to these little guys, but I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a little bit of shimmer and then maybe we can use um, one of our gel pens to add some sparkle. And then we're going to do the same here. See, we're adding a little bit of sparkle. Just to maybe give it more, I don't know, make it look more interesting. And that's what we have so far. Now I'm going to find a piece of paper to put this on and then we're going to put it on a card. I'll be right back. Okay, so we have everything we're going to use to put it together. Um, I cut and embossed um, this paper using, let's see the name of the folder. It's called um, the Oxford by Cuddlebug. Um, I don't think these they make these anymore unless you can find them like on Amazon because uh, Cuddlebug was um, put out of commission. So um, I believe they stopped making all those. But you may be able to find it on Amazon. It gives it such a nice texture. And then we're going to figure out where we're going to put it. I think we're going to trim it down just a tad bit more. I wanted a bigger outline on this one, white outline. Just so the card wouldn't look so dark. So we're just going to take just a teeny thing like off, like maybe less than eighth of an eighth. 
So let's get rid of that. And let's see how it looks. And to me, that looks pretty good. So I'm just going to fold this up a little bit and just tack it down because I really don't want this one to come out crooked. So let's just put that down and then we're going to come to the other side and add plenty of glue to hold it in place make sure i get closer to there and i think we're good i love texture um i like when people open their cards and they the minute they put their hand in the envelope, they feel that something's going to be really nice in there. And then we're going to add this guy here. We're going to add plenty of adhesive. And then we're going to see exactly where we want it. Now, I'm leaving enough space on the bottom so I could put a sentiment. And we just got to commit to it because it's already there. So. Okay, so this is what we have so far. And you may think it looks too high, but when you have that sentiment here, it, it makes sense. So let's go ahead and add that. Okay, let's see what we're going to use. We can do seasons greetings. And the last one I did um Christmas wishes. So maybe seasons greetings. That would look good. Yes, let's do that. Okay. Get our platform ready. Now, if you wonder why there's so much noise and why I move around so much, I have a tiny space to craft. And um, everything is, you move one thing out of place and you already have a wreck. So um, it's just a lot of moving things around in order to get things done. Someday, someday I will have a big craft room. But right now, just feel blessed to have somewhere that I can just um, relax and get things done. So we're going to bring our Versafine ink in. And hopefully this one behaves better than the other dies. I mean the other stamps. Okay, I think that's good enough. I'm going to trim this a little bit.
And then that guy will go right there. We're actually going to trim it a little more on each side. Okay, so we cut out our sentiment and we're going to place it right there. Make sense? Let's add some glue. And then we're going to add it right there. Oops. Just trying to make it all even. I have ink all over my hand, so I'm using this paper so I don't mess up my creation here. Let's add a little bit of glue to this edge. And my dog is about to bark, but here we go. That's what we have. Now we can add some snowflakes here with some glitter, which I might. We'll see. But if I decide to do that, I'll put the pictures up um, at the end of the video. I, I hope this helps you guys if you're struggling with these stamps. Um, can we create something beautiful out of them? Absolutely. Hopefully you have uh, less challenges than I did, but... We figured things out right we can prop it up a little bit of paper and it's it was able to stamp so i mean it's troubleshooting um nothing is perfect uh especially in crafting handmade stuff right um i hope this helps you i hope you like the video and please subscribe have a great one bye